Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn how to analyze the data quality of Parquet files using DuckDB. Okay, so to give you some context, I've been loading the New York Taxis dataset into Apache Pino. And once I loaded the data, I noticed there were some problems. And in particular, there was some missing data. So I was expecting there to be around 1.5 billion records and there were only 1.1 billion. So it kind of seems like there's about 400 million records or so missing. And then the other problem was that the min and max dates ranges for the pickup and drop-off times were well outside the range of what I was expecting. Like I'm only loading data from 2009 to 2022 and the, the values I was seeing are well outside that. So that's kind of strange. Okay, and while I was an analyzing this data, I saw a tweet by Robin Muffet about a tool called DuckDB, which he'd been using to analyze CSV files. And I learned that you can also use it to analyze Parquet files. So what is DuckDB? So it's an in-process SQL OLAP DBMS, and in its own words, it has all the benefits of a database with none of the hassle. So let's see how that claim stands up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna install the CLI. So we'll download that, get it, get it installed. And what we can see now is we've got the duckdb command prompt. And we're gonna write a query that counts the number of records. And instead of putting a table name, we can actually say from uh, a location, so data, and then grab all the files with the Parquet extension. So that's pretty, pretty neat. And what we get back is it says there's 1.6 billion rows. So we're missing actually 500 million. So it's more than I thought. Uh, but why are we missing them? So let's write a query to return some of the rows. Let's see what's in those files. Uh, so if we write that query, oh, it's not actually, it doesn't seem like we've, we've got a bit of a problem here, haven't we? The fields that are in one of the Parquet files are not in the other one. Uh, so it looks like maybe we've got some different schemas between our files. So let's just go and have a look at those individual Parquet files. So we'll start with the July 2011 file. And what we can do is we can use the describe clause in front of a select star query to get back the list of the field names or column names. Uh, and so we can see there, there's, there's a bunch of columns. Uh, and let's do the same for the uh, October 2009 one. So that's the one that was different. And we can see we've got, they, they're totally different. Like the data is the same probably, but the, the names of the fields are totally different. And even the data types are different as well. So that's gonna be problematic. Uh, and presumably Apache Pino is then ignoring the files that have a different schema than the one it's expecting. Now for the other problem, the min max date ranges. Let's, let's write a query to explore that as well. And what we're expecting is we should be seeing a range from 2009 to 2022. And what we actually see is a range from 1998 to 2017. That's presumably way too high. Like hopefully rides are not taking 50 years uh, and they can't presumably be starting in 1998 either. Uh, and so how we're going to work out what's going on here is we're going to use a function called parquet underscore metadata. And what this returns is the statistics for different columns, which is quite neat. So we get back every column in every parquet file and it will give you the minimum value for that uh, column and then the maximum value as well, which is perfect for what we want. And so we're going to write a query that uses that function, but we're going to filter it to only return, use the pickup and drop off fields because those are the only ones that we're interested in. And we can see like if we, even though we're only returning five, five of the records, there are problems across multiple files. Like I was hoping it was just gonna be one file and I could just go and clean up the data of that file and then re-import it into, Pino, into Apache Pino. But it looks like we've got problems uh, everywhere. And so the next step is we've got to do either some data cleaning uh, on these Parquet files and then rewrite them, uh, or we're gonna to have to do some filtering on ingestion into Apache Pino so that we don't end up loading uh, like uh, dirty data. Uh, and so that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to use DuckDB to analyze Parquet files. If you found the video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so you'll learn when there are new videos. Uh, if you have any ideas for new things you want me to cover or any questions that you have about what we've covered today, please let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.